the Zebra Light SC64 LE is an amazing EDC. It's efficient, it's bright, it's high CRI and lightweight. About the only thing that lets us down is the tint of the LH351D emitter. People will go to great lengths to mod these and they're difficult. But what if I said there was a very easy fix that you could do at home in 10 minutes or under that would tame that tint? Stay tuned and find out how. Welcome back to Shoe Lights, guys. I'm going to show you today how to tame the tint of your LH351Ds. So here I've got a stock SC64 LE with a Samsung LH351D emitter. And on the right here, I've got the modified one. And if you can't tell the difference yet, don't worry. It is difficult to tell. But let me show you what's going on. If I take, and I, yeah, I got my video lights on here, but let's just go to turbo. So H1, they call it in zebra language. And if I get a measurement here, you're going to see that on turbo, it's a little bit above 4000K and it whitens up. It's, it's pretty neutral. But if we go to a medium mode, and let me get on a medium mode and kind of get that in there. Notice that it's 36 points above delta UV on a medium or low, and that that's perceived as green, so it's not awesome. Now check this one out. This one right here, we're gonna to go to the same medium, do the same thing, and look at that, dead neutral on medium. In fact, it's a little under neutral when I don't have the video lights on, but I'm just doing it quickly here for the sake of speed. Now on the H1, look at that, negative 30. Wouldn't you like to know what I've done? Well, it's so simple, and you've probably heard of this before. I'm just using Lee Zircon minus screen filters. And so we got two different versions of it here. We got the 804, which is a lighter version. You can see it's just a little bit pink against this white paper underneath it. And this is the 803, so it's a little bit more dense. They call these two densities. So the way that Lee minus screen filters work is they're 801, 802, 803, 804, and, and the lower the numbers, 801 would be the pinkest, and 804 is a very light shade. And I found with the zebra lights here, the 804 works great. So let's see how this works. It is so dead simple that I think a lot of people are gonna wanna do this and wanna buy one of the zebra lights. Basically, you just cut out a little square here, and uh, here's, oh, you know what? Let me show you the mod really quickly before we even go into it. Okay, let me get a really good focus here. And if you caught this before, you just, you're an eagle-eyed viewer. You just really know what you're doing. Now check it out. This one is untouched. It's just plain glass. And this one has the filter installed. I'm gonna zoom in on this so that you can see it really clearly and hopefully you can see now I didn't do a great application on this one on the right I actually rushed it because I didn't know what I was doing and I was just trying things out but basically and I'll just tell you now and then I'll show you how to do it you cut out a circle now the trick is how do you get the leaf filter to stay on without opening this light up and the answer is UV resin just a drop of UV resin put that little circle there hit it with UV light it sticks no problem. I've been using this in my pocket for a couple days now. It's not coming off. However, it is reversible. So if you want to reverse it, you can get your fingernail under there, kind of peel up the filter, and it kind of it kind of flakes off like it's flaky hard candy or something, and you can scratch the UV resin off. It is not permanent. So the way I like to do this, I've got a couple tricks here for you to do it. You want an 18 millimeter circle, and an 18 350 is a perfect template. So just get one of these guys, line it up kind of under here, cut a square out. So let me start with that. Okay. All right, so I got a little square here that I've cut out, a little 18 millimeter square. Again, I'm gonna put out there that I'm using the 804 because I find the 804 balances the LH351D and these zebra lights perfectly. Now I'm just gonna line up this filter on the bottom of the battery here because the battery bottom has a little more contrast with this black here. And I'm just gonna use my X-Acto knife to just kind of trace 
a ring around it. And then once I get the ring, I'm actually going to cut it with some scissors. So uh, there'll be an edit here, and then I'll have my finished version. So using the back of the battery here, I just traced a little circle around the filter with my X-Acto knife. And now that I got that, I'm just going to go ahead and use my scissors here to just kind of cut along that circle. And I'm going to do this off camera so I do a good job, and then we'll come back. All right, once you get it cut out from the square like this, if you're lucky, it'll be just perfect. If it's a little bit too big, then you know, just go around and trim a little as you go. And you'll know it's right when you go to set it in the light here. And it just kind of fits in there perfectly like that does. And in fact, usually it won't even want to fall out. Mine looks a little bit smaller than sticking in there with friction. But, you know, again, you don't have to be that perfect. You just got to get it aesthetically pleasing. Now, a couple tips about the Lee minus green here. One, I've never seen this filter as clear as glass. So if you take a look at it and you see like little tiny hairline scratches or something like that, that's just kind of par for the course. I wouldn't sweat it. It's not going to affect the beam at all. But here's another thing. It is a kind of plasticky filter. So do not uh, use, you know, paper towel on here or anything like that. It will scratch it. And also, uh, so, so if you do wipe it, wipe it with like a soft cloth like this. This one's actually gross. I wouldn't use this one. But, you know, these microfiber cloths are great. And lastly... This filter tends to kind of melt a little bit. If you use acetone or high alcohol content, like 90%, 99% isopropyl alcohol, it, it'll just kind of melt and, and kind of get gooey. So again, um, you know, I would just say a uh, hot breath, you know, water, you know, condensation, and wipe it off with a soft cloth if you need to wipe it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to install it, and I'll show you, hopefully, hopefully we'll do it one take here, show you how easy it is. So I'm just going to set this right here for now because I don't want to pick up any particulate matter. We're going to use this stuff. Oh, I didn't even talk about it yet. All right, so this is UV resin. You can get this on Amazon for about 10, 11 bucks, something like that. And it's clear, and when you hit it with UV light, it just solidifies. Uh, this is what I use instead of Norland 61 for my tritium tubes. But uh, anyways, I'm just going to take this stuff here. I'm going to take that off for a second. And I'm just going to put a drop of this right on top of the lens. There you go. A drop like that. Now, I want enough that when I push down on the filter, it spreads out. It makes a laminar flow, you know, kind of no bubbles in between the resin and the filter. Now, I actually don't, haven't done this too many times, so I don't know if that's enough. I hope it is. I don't want so much that I'm swimming in it. But here's the cool thing, is if I mess this up, when I go to put it on, if there's air bubbles and it's not enough UV resin, you can actually just pull it back out, wipe it off with like a, like a you know, paper towel on the lens here. Again, paper towel might scratch this, so be careful. But, uh, and then try again. It is, it remains liquid, it doesn't cure in the air or anything. It remains liquid until UV hits it. So I got that drop there, and I'm just going to drop this right on top. You can see it's making that kind of laminar flow there. And I'm going to push down a little bit. I'm just going to try and get this as flat as possible. Now, since I'm doing it on camera, it's hard for me to tell if I have zero bubbles. So I'm actually going to bring this over to my magnifying loop and just make sure I got zero bubbles. And if I do, then, you know, I'll just come right back. Okay, I just checked and it looks great. I haven't done anything to it. I just looked under the magnifying loop. It looks solid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that my UV resin is capped and out of the way before I hit it with my UV light here. And you don't have to hit it for long. So I'm just going to boop like that and just, you know, hit there for maybe... 10, 15 seconds on high. This is a really strong one. This thing has uh, three LEDs in it. But uh, yeah, just about that long. And check this out. It's done. Totally done. That will not come out now. It's recessed, so it's protected. Let's take a look at what the new amount here is on the Sekonic. Okay, there was the reading from the last one, and that was on turbo. Let me hit it on turbo as well. 
Look at that. Negative 35 on turbo, which I like it rosy on turbo. Let's do a low here. Get it right in there. Do it on low. And look at that. It's rosy on low even. Now, these emitters vary, and I forgot to tell you about that. Uh, this one was running greener. This one was almost uh, 40 over BBL. This one wasn't. So that's why I had this one waiting in the wings. It was a better version of a LH351D. But there you go. Look at that. Slightly rosy. This is perfect. And look at the job I did. Look how easy that was. There's no bubbles. You cannot even tell it's on there. And it's reversible. I mean, guys, this is a game changer as far as I'm concerned. You know, opening these up and modding them, is like a complete pain in the backside. Now you don't have to. Oh, and I almost forgot. Not only is it still high CRI, look at that. The high C it actually went up a little bit. It went to 98. It was 95 or so before. And it got rosier, right? But check this out. This is actually still brighter with the filter than the Nietzsche 509As are that people swap in there. So uh, the uh, I've ra I rated both these before, and this one was rosier, and this one was around 700 high lumens, so it was like about 800-ish lumens, and this one was almost 850, but it was also much greener. I put the uh, filter on there, and it dropped down to about 730. So from 850 to 730, lost about 120 lumens, but Here's the thing, that is still higher than a Nietzsche 509A would be. It'll be about uh, 550 lumens, maybe 600 if you're lucky. So yeah, win, 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 right? Runs cooler, more efficient, brighter. I mean, it's everything. And it took how long, right? So there you go, guys. Go forth and make your perfect EDC with the ZebraLite SC64CLE and with a little Lee Midas Green filter, the Zircon 804. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.